but in ourselves. My Lords, the library briefing for Baroness Featherstone's important debate notes that the distinctive feature of parliamentary democracies is that the executive receives its mandate from and is responsible to the legislature. But there's a revealing omission here. Actually, the distinctive feature of democracy is that Parliament receives its mandate from and is responsible to the demos, half the word democracy, along with Kratos, power. Yet people power is the opposite of the experience of the public of late. Indeed, it's disparaged as populism. Voter-mandated manifesto legislation is blocked by forces beyond the electorate's control. And national and local government frequently outsource decision-making to arm's-length bodies, unelected quangos and consultants ringed away, uh, fenced away from popular pressure. The public feels sidelined, and like other noble lords, I suspect that's one reason the plight of the sub-postmasters has so captured the public's imagination, way beyond the atrocious miscarriage of justice. Millions identified with the sheer frustration of being ignored and shouting into the void as the computer, the bureaucrats and the establishment machine says no. If you talk to a vast array of grassroots campaigners, service users, parents groups, many too feel that they are battling against a technocracy that acts as though it knows best. And while they're not branded as criminals or frauds, as the sub-postmasters were, citizens are branded as everything from ill-informed dupes to extremist bigots because they're concerned about ULEs or rip-off leaseholds or politicised school curriculum or whatever. And what does it say about attitudes to the demos that beyond the self-interested post office management, so many in the judiciary, political life, in corporate <coughs> tech and auditor companies didn't question when suddenly hundreds of decent postmasters had become venal thieves. To restore trust in democracy, it is essential parliamentarians, the establishment, restore trust in the demos. The other aspect of this debate, how to halt declining standards in public life, a note of caution. Many proposed solutions, more stringent codes of conduct, endless training courses and ethics committees, um, seem more like process-driven bureaucratic box ticking than a real enriching of public service. We should also acknowledge initiatives to regulate standards themselves have become mildly contentious ideological scandals. For example, pushing values such as diversity, inclusion and equity as though interchangeable with improving standards in public life. But in the last few days, an apocryphal DIE tale. Rachel Mead, a Kent social worker for 20 years, won a landmark claim after being subjected to a lengthy fitness to practice investigation by her own professional regulator, Social Work England, because she posted legal expressions of her belief that a person can't change biological sex. A 51-page uh, judgment described the standards disciplinary process itself as a form of harassment. And we saw similar with the hounding of the now totally exonerated Baroness Faulkner using unfounded allegations of bullying at the EHRC to mount an ill um, uh, judged uh, process. We must be aware these processes, set up to police standards, being weaponised for malicious and politicised reasons, or we will inadvertently create even more miscarriages of justice than we've seen at the post office. Yeah. Uh, my